All right. So let's just get through some of the fuckery that went on this week. I don't have a lot, but what I do have, some of this shit we're going to fly through and some of the shit we're going to talk about, okay? So first, Juliana Rancic, who I call Rancid. Uh, so with the uh, Golden Globes, I believe it was the Golden Globes, if I'm not mistaken, she uh, had asked Miss Issa Rae, Pretty much something along the lines of if you were to write uh, your, your memoirs, what would they be titled? And she elegantly uh, gave her like a, like the best clap back she could, which I'm just like, okay, that 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 was sweet. And it was along the lines of, um, well, my next memoir's name will be called. And it was one of those where it was so it was one of those where it's just like, okay, well, I I, I feel some shade. So I'm going to throw back the shade. And there's a lot of people saying that you can't expect people to know every minute detail about someone. But if you're going to be interviewing someone and that is your job to have this database and everything, you should have already known that, especially if you're going to ask her this question. Now, if she didn't know, which obviously she didn't, she could have asked her, like, have you written your memoirs yet? And it could have been like, yeah, I actually did. And da 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 and then it could have segue, but to be so oblivious and just to ask a question, well, hey, you just got shaded, like, yeah, literally. And, of course, we all know social media drug that ass, but, hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to give her any more attention than that, and a lot of people are trying to defend her, but I'm going to say this. I really can't, especially when she said, uh, paraphrasing, that Zendaya looked like, she, uh, you know, she smelled like, you know, weed and some other stuff because she had full uh, locks. So, yeah, a, a big fuck you to her. I'm talking. I'm talking about Juliana, not you know, Zendaya. I like Zendaya. So Miss Jocelyn Hernandez, y'all know I like Ratchet Reality Television. So Miss Jocelyn. Now, what I have to say would be in the congrats but I can't really give I can't really do that because there's a second piece so the congrats is she actually has her own reality show and let me see it is um <clears throat> Jocelyn takes Miami which is good and it's actually being uh produced by Carlos King the only thing is that's not the only piece of news that's out there and apparently, uh, it's being reported from Basso.com <clears throat> that she's not able to bring her daughter, Bonnie Bella, to do any taping in Miami because it was said that, you know, she has to do check-ins or there's a certain person on her case with her and Stevie J where, you know, certain check-ins has to be met. And this uh, individual was calling to check in on uh, baby Bonnie Bella wasn't able to get any information, wasn't even able to get in contact with her. And even when asked, Jocelyn really didn't have a good excuse as to where she was and what was going on, all this other stuff. So pretty much the courts are pretty much trying to put into play that Bonnie Bella can't leave. And it has already been stated between uh, Jocelyn and Stevie J that if they are going to uh, take Bonnie Bella out of Georgia that they can only do it for like two weeks and it has to be for a vacation. So, Jocelyn, I'm going to need for you to get it together, sweetheart. Young Hollywood. Now, today, my hair is a little different because I actually had my hair gel yesterday and I just threw a do-rag on it and went to sleep so my hair is, com is compressed but my hair is still very natural and whatnot. In the event you guys are wondering. But for those of you who have been watching Love Hip Hop Miami, you know Young Hollywood had a lot to say about Amara La Negra and her hair. And he fell the ways. He actually did a Snapchat. I'm not going to play because I'm not going to give him that much shine because I'm at this point, like I said, I'm sorry. I don't like the guy. But 
he pretty much is trying to defend himself. And like I said, I would put the clip up from TMZ, but the last time I did it, TMZ with the quickness snatched up that monetization, so I ain't, ain't going to do that. But um, <clears throat> pretty much, this is what he had to say. Um, so, as Mr. Hollywood um, claimed before, he doesn't deserve any backlash for the racist comments he made because he says he wasn't speaking from a personal standpoint, but just for industry's sake. He also says that Amara Afro is a wig. So since it's not her natural hair, he does he didn't do anything wrong by asking her if she should get rid of it. He also claims to be very aware of Afro Latinos, even though that was not the case on the episode of Love and Hip Hop. Young Hollywood's main concern in the exclusive video from TMZ is the fact that he's getting death threats and that one conversation is majorly affecting his personal life. Unsurprisingly, he doesn't think his character should be under attack and claims he's trying to bring to light a situation he didn't think would blow up the way that it did. <clears throat> and he also even said that he was um pretty much speaking about, you know, like that's the industry's perception. Now, my thing is this. One, you are a producer. So, yes, in essence, if she was to do the song, you may want her to look a certain way. But, again, you are a producer. All you should be worried about is producing the song and getting your check and just let that be that. One. Two, <clears throat> whether or not she is or isn't wearing a wig, you have many female artists that wear wigs. But it, but this is one of those instances where he is trying to deflect and deny and defend rather than just accept ownership of the fact that, you know what, yeah, I said something that was wrong, that was both racist and, you know, rooted, you know, in colorism. It is what it is. I apologize. And even on the little Snapchat that he was doing, he was laughing about it. The only reason that it, and I even said, I don't know if it was in the Tablets Training Tiles with T last week, or I'm pretty sure it was in my Love of Hip Hop episode, well, reviews that. It's not going to matter to him until it affects his bottom line. And that's what anyone, anything, when something starts to affect your bottom line, oh, you're you, you going to think differently. You're going to tap dance, back pedal, pussy pop, do all of that when it affects that. So the fact that, well, it's not affecting his bottom line, but he's receiving death threats. I can't speak for the people doing it, but it is, it is outraging people. And we do live in a climate right now where, yes, tension is very high and there is a lot of racial divide. And for him to say something like that yes it is very wrong it is very idiotic and he is probably somebody that may not necessarily you know like the black look that she has but i'm pretty sure he sleeps what i'm um, sleeps black probably may not let somebody know is one of those where he is engulfed in the culture but it's like he has a disdain for it i kind of have a problem with that but it is what it is and it's just like you can't be mad at anybody but yourself even if Mona had you get on the show and say this these are words that came out of your mouth and not just what you said also mocking her doing this and everything calling her psychotic because she was standing up for who she is and what she believes in and that is very common that a lot of people would do that to black women when they want to stand up for something oh you're being psychotic you're being overbearing you're being this you're being that miss me with the bullshit